Texas Governor Rick Perry, former Speaker... New the six remaining Republican presidential candidates have squared off in a television debate ahead of Tuesday's New Hampshire primary. After his win in the Iowa caucuses, the former Massachusetts governor, Mitt Romney, has a big lead in the polls. For most of the night, he trained most of his fire to attack President Obama, while his challengers squabbled amongst themselves to take shots at him. Business experience doesn't necessarily match up with being the commander-in-chief of this country. The commander-in-chief of this country isn't a CEO. It's someone who has to, has to lead, and it's also being the president is not a CEO. <laughs> the Texas governor, Rick Perry, concentrated on foreign policy. I would send troops back into Iraq because I will tell now? you, I, I, I think we start talking with the Iraqi uh, individuals there. The idea that we allow the Iranians to come back into Iraq and take over that country with all of the treasure, both in blood and money, that we have spent in Iraq because this president wants to kowtow to his liberal leftist base. The candidates will tonight have another chance to sway voters before New Hampshire votes. A similar performance from Romney could help him seal victory and put him in a very strong position for the next Republican vote in South Carolina later this month. multi-generational war. Where are we going to get the, the, the kids to fight this war? I don't see any of the Republicans up well, there so, uh, so encouraging playing. people to go to, to join the military. Or yeah, no, it's, it's dwindling. And, and right now, one of the candidates this week said we should stay there 100 years if necessary. Where are you going to get the troops if we go into Iran? They're going to have a draft. And they'll have a draft with women. That's what we have to stop. We need to defend this country. And we Empires always end by spreading themselves too far. And that's what's happening here. And the first sign when we've overextended ourselves is the destruction of the currency. And just look at what's happening with the value of the dollar. Mr. Paul, how, said long, how long can $18 million keep you in this? $18 million. Well, that's just a one-day notice, you know, or a one quarter, you know. Matter of fact, it was 20, 20 million in a quarter. So um, I, I have no idea. Uh, but um, I'm sort of obligated to my supporters who are individuals who spontaneously send our money. If they keep sending me money to stay in the race, that's what I have to do unless we come out embarrassingly last in, in these races. You know, as long as it's reasonable, we should pursue it. Is it a strong aggressive campaign enough to convince the voters? What's that? A strong performance in the debate. Is that enough to convince voters to maybe go your way? Everything helps. It's your whole campaign. Here in New Hampshire and across the country. What have they been? Well, they're, they're the base of it. The, the young people know what's coming. And I, I brag that they've learned their arithmetic. They figured it out. They know what their obligations are. $60 trillion of entitlement obligation, a social security system that's broke. They have to work hard to keep paying into the system, on and on, and they know it doesn't work. So when I talk about saving $100, $200, $300, $400 $400000000000 dollars a year and come home and let them get out of social security, they're all for it. You said we can't pay lip service to the Constitution. Uh, which of the fellow Republican candidates do you think does that the most? No, I'm not going to volunteer. I think I'm going to let somebody else figure that out because I think all of Washington is guilty of that. If you look at Congress, if you look at the Supreme Court, if you look at the executive branch for the last 50, 60, 70 years, they do pay a lot of lip service because we have embarked on an unconstitutional manner over these last hundred years. But every single person in Washington takes the oath of office to obey the Constitution, and obviously they don't follow it. I hear that your support you scares the Republican establishment. Should they be scared? Well, power is the only thing they seek. They might be scared. If they were, if they wanted constitutional limit in the government and believed in individual liberty and balanced budget, they shouldn't be frightened. So I don't know why they should be frightened. The leadership uh, in the party might be, but the grassroots wouldn't be frightened with the program I'm talking about. If you were elected president, how would you get anything passed by the Congress? How would you get any of your reforms passed by a Democratic Congress? Well, I, I 
think that a lot of what I'm talking about has great appeal to the Democrats. They believe in civil liberties. They believe in, in uh, a different foreign policy. They're highly critical of what we're doing. So I think I can get a consensus uh, with them, especially if I talk about never throwing people out in the streets. And see, I, 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 in spite of some of these programs, we shouldn't have started. In the young, I want to get the young people out. The elderly are totally dependent. And they're going to be out in the streets if we continue to do what we're doing. And the only way we can save our dollar and save the system and tide us over and work our way out of this is to cut this overseas spending. So this is very appealing to Democrats as well as Republicans, for that matter. It's very appealing to America to come up with a sensible program. They have to just decide whether or not we have a problem. If they don't think we have a problem, they probably will say, uh, why don't you just go away because everything is fine and we can get young people like you to work forever and take care of everybody else. But, well, I think it's very important. It's uh, you know, it's the second primary, and uh, I think if somebody does very well on it, they get national attention, and uh, and you just keep going on into the to the next uh, election. So uh, obviously, it's very important. There's been a lot of a lot of candidates up here on both sides here for the past year. Thank you. How do you assess your performance? I was wondering. To arrange a ride in the blimp. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I'm not. Uh, I'm not in charge of the blimp. That's an independent. It's an independent expenditure. <laughs> so you have to call the blimp people. What's a good showing for you? Ready? 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 One, two, three. Thank you. Um, Thank you very uh, much. I, I, good luck. I think so. But I don't make predictions. How do you I think we'll do well. How do you assess your performance? Son? You're happy with I it? I felt good about it. You know, because of the format, I like the format. It uh, it was less rigid and it was fairer. It was run better. And you know, compared to the amount of time I'll get tomorrow night, I think it's it was pretty good. <laughs> how, do you, how, do you deal, how do you deal with this in the Fox uh, forum tomorrow night? Yeah, that, that to me, and most Americans, even those who disagree <laughs> with me, tell me, and some Fox people have told me. That seems to be unfair. People, Americans are pretty fair-minded. We disagree and we argue, but they, they like fairness and they don't like cheating and they see this as being too deliberate. So uh, that would be, uh, you know, I think Fox has a problem and they have to deal with it. In Iowa, the message seemed to be that people were voting for change, regardless of the kind of change. What sense are you getting about New Hampshire? Well, I, I think they're sick and tired of it. I think they expressed that self last election. You know, in 2006, they wanted change. There was a big change in this. There, there's a recent Facebook poll that had you at 34%, and, and, a, and an ABC poll at the same time had you at 8%. What do you, what do you think the weighting is between those two? The Facebook poll, poll was, you know, know. online. You, you, somebody else would have to analyze that. It's obviously different. Facebook would obviously be young people, and I'm probably in, in between the two. Facebook probably gives me uh, more credibility and more votes, but I think the other ones have generally rated me lower. Would you, would you, have you said a lot of good things about Barack Obama today. Would you support him over a candidate like Rudy Giuliani? Or no, I don't think so. And uh, at the end, I, I said the reason would be the economic policies because I, uh, I'm a strict free market person. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to civil liberties and the war, he has some decent ideas worth thinking about. Who out of your Republican counterparts would you like to give the most severe uh, history lesson to? You seem to be at odds with. Uh, I don't know. Maybe if I, if, maybe if they were willing, I'd pass out some books to all of them. Uh, <laughs> how, do, how do you deal with the snickering from Senator McCain from Governor Romney? Uh, I, think I don't listen to it. I can hear it. <laughs> Congressman Mayor Giuliani wants to expand the military by two hundred thousand. How can we afford it? How can we afford it? Get ready. They're going to draft him. Everybody here. Where's the money going to come from? You print it, the dollar will go bust, and everybody's going to get poor, and then the will go you? I don't want to wait to get I want to bring it home. Or lie yeah, to exactly. what, what do you make of Rudy Giuliani saying that, you know, American foreign policy in the past has no effect on security? Well, he's been saying it for a long time, and I'm not sure in my explanation, and I think, uh, I'll bet you the majority of the American people agree with me on that explanation, because it's too logical. Think how to uh, uh, figure out how we would act if somebody did to us exactly what we've done. Uh, I'm just from the Are you supporting not only the family members' question and never answered, but the not only the support and then demand for a new independent not 11 investigation? Yeah, I support more investigation because I think that the ineptness was probably hidden because there was a tremendous amount of ineptness. And that's generally what government in 
investigations do is they, they hide the inefficiencies and the inadequacies of government officials. When you're Thank talking you. about 9-11, you seem to be on another plane here. You're saying we have to watch what everybody else, or what we do to everybody else. Everybody ganged up on you when you said that. Why is that? Everybody was against you there. You're the because, only one saying it. Because uh, they've dug their heels in and they will just lose everything they've ever said. And then they'll say, my gosh, the war was fought for no good reason and we have to come home. So they can't admit this. They won't admit it. So they have to stick to this argument that it, it is, uh, we're, we're fighting terrorism by going over there. In spite of the fact that there was not one Al-Qaeda person in Iraq before we went over there, now it's flooded with Al-Qaeda. So I don't know how they can explain that.